Hi, I'm Debbie Penley. For those of you who don't know me, I've been teaching at Summer Music School for, this is my third year now. I teach fiber, art, fiber arts, but I also taught a make your own instrument class last year. And one of the instruments we made was ocarinas. Now some of you might know what an ocarina is from a very popular um, Nintendo game called Legend of Zelda, Ocarina in Time. And that's where um, a lot of kids nowadays have heard about ocarinas and they kind of look like this on the game. Um, but they're action instrument that's over 12,000 years old and they're basically vessel flutes. So instead of being a normal flute where you blow over a hole to make noise and where you have an opening at the end, a vessel flute you blow that you just blow into something like a recorder would be and the sound comes out just like a recorder and it doesn't come out anywhere else it just comes out here or of course where your finger holes are so it'd be very similar to say the way a whistle is made where you can see that you would blow into here and then the top has that little notch in it and the sound and it blows over that hole and that's what makes the sound um, the same thing with pipe organs are made the same way inside there is the same kind of mechanism um, and actually, we learned last year in our making an, uh, make your own instrument class, Native American flutes are made the same way. Even though you blow in the ends, when it comes over here, that part there is um, the same thing as this part in an ocarina. So, the original ocarina is when they started making them, and ocarina is loosely translated little goose. So that comes into play later with the two videos that I'm going to send um, to go along with this. But they originally started making them like this with the fingering kind of like they call them transverse, kind of like transverse flute where your fingering is in, in a row. So you would have one note per finger and it just goes up the scale. Um, and just to show you some other ocarinas that I have um, that are made by some, uh, this I forget his name, I'll have to check, maybe I'll link it in the in the video when I send it in here, but um, it's a very famous Japanese ocarina maker, and I bought one of these myself, and then the other one, um, I think that one I won in a contest, and this one I bought, I can't remember, but um, one of the videos that I, I link to here on my YouTube is what earned me one of those ocarinas. I think it was the chocolate ocarina, I'm not sure. So, um, and yes, chocolate ocarina is what it sounds like. It was an ocarina made out of chocolate. So make sure you actually click on the YouTube links. I hope you enjoy them and I'll explain them in a second. But anyway, so a vessel flute makes its noise um, within the chamber, within the vessel. And it sounds just like a flute versus a uh, recorder, which is why I like ocarinas because I can't play flute very well, but I can play a recorder. So. how you can play a scale. So, oh, the transverse versus this. So this is a pendant ocarina or um, four hole ocarina, although you can make it up to six um, to add an extra note on the scale up to a, a, a high D, or not high D, but just a D above the C there. And then also I have a little hole there to make accidental. So you can make flats and sharps as you play the scale. Um, but the, it was a, tr um, cross fingering is what they call it because what it allows you to do is by switching where your fingers are playing, you can achieve the whole scale. Technically speaking, there's a lot of mathematicians out there that um, talk about it's not an exact scale. Um, and as you, of course, fluctuate with the amount of breath you put into it, you can change the note that you're playing. But for the most part, it's a full scale. And the way that many people choose to read music when they're playing ocarinas, especially starting out, not maybe when you actually learn how to play them really well, but when you start off, you might see something like this for your sheet music. Much like guitar tabs, these are ocarina tabs. And what they do is you'll notice it has little circles. Here, I'll get out so I can focus maybe. Um, circles that are filled in, filled in or circles that are open. And that's so that it can tell you if it's, if it's filled in. It means where your fingers are on the holes on the ocarina. And where it's open, you have an open hole. So that's how you can read the tabs then. So that way if you get, forget how to play a song and you know that even if you know the notes, it can be hard to transpose in your head as you're playing. So that can help you out. So I'm going to play a song here that I already recorded just because I knew I'd mess up if I did it all in one swoop. <laughs> so that's why you'll see it fade away here, but I'll play a little song on this. And then um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the two videos that I'm linking to on this as well.
Okay, so the two videos that they're going to link um, along with this presentation are videos that I made a decade ago. So <laughs> those of you who know me now and my students, you might think it's funny because you'll see a much younger me in them. But um, it's when I first started making ocarinas and I was really into it at the time. I made them all the time. I would stay up till 3 in the morning while my kids were asleep to work on them. And there was a group online I was involved in, a forum that would discuss ocarina making and the technicalities of it and just all kinds of different stuff. And they would have running contests with um, one of the members of the group, and he's still active nowadays on YouTube. He does a lot of videos where he'll play, you know, the four panes, and he's in all four of them playing different parts and stuff like that. He's really good. And um, one of them was just, I think, the most unique material that you could come up with to make an ocarina. You guys have probably maybe seen where people have used vegetables and things like that to play um, an ocarina online. If you haven't, Google it. There are tons of vegetable and paper and just odd uh, materials that ocarina makers have used to make ocarinas. So one of my videos here is going to be me making an ocarina out of chocolate. Most of the video, there's music that's just uh, that non-copyrighted type music on there, but, um, which is actually an actual song, so maybe it was copyrighted, I don't know, it was 10 years ago, but, um, at the end you'll see me playing the Chocarina just a little bit, and I call it Chocarina because chocolate ocarina, and then the other one was, um, I was, I didn't, it was 10 years ago, the stuff I had, I couldn't make stop motion quite as well, and it still took me forever to do what I did, so it's not true stop motion animation, but it's a story, and I'll explain the story because <laughs> a lot of people tell me when they watched it, I still don't get it. So the song is an original song though, and that's why I'm going to link to it. It was something that I actually wrote myself um, and played on the ocarina, and you'll see me playing it every now and then as you hear me playing it the whole time. It's a story about a boy and his dog, and the boy goes off on a vacation or trip or something with his family, except for the dad who is still there, or maybe he just goes to the grocery store, I'm not sure. But the dog is left behind, and he's like, oh no, i got to go with my boy. And he sees the dad get in the car, so he jumps in the car with the dad, and then he ends up on a plane accidentally, and then the dad's like, what? There's a dog on the plane? So he brings the dog back home, but meanwhile, the boy comes back home from wherever he's at. It's like, have you seen my dog? Have you seen my dog? Where's my dog at? And of course, there's a happy ending in the end. But I just wanted to explain that because... <laughs> Again, it was 10 years ago, I was exploring with stop motion, I was exploring with ocarina making, I was just having fun with stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the two videos, um, and maybe next year when we get back to normal, you guys will be interested in joining my Make an Instrument class, and you can make your own ocarina. We do make it out of clay, um, and we can make animals, we can make all kinds of different stuff. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoy. Thanks.